In this video, we're going to start the process of making strawberry wine. Hi, I'm Charles and welcome to DIY Fermentation, your site for doing fermentation on a shoestring budget. Again, if you like what you see here and would like to see more of them, please click on the subscribe and notify buttons and I will try and do one of these again every week. One of the things that I realized when I started doing the research on how to make strawberry wine was that there is no one way to actually do it. There's a number of different ways in which you can extract the juice from the strawberries. There's a number of ways in which you can add, add the sugar. There's a number of ways uh, in which you can actually do the fermentation. There's a number of ways in which you can strain it. There's a whole lot of ways to do this. So this seems to be a very forgiving project. You can pretty much do it almost any way you want. The thing of it is, though, is that one, we've got to get the juice from the strawberries, and two, we've got to begin the fermentation process on that juice. And then after that, it's just like any other wine, you can just do your fermentation as you would normally. Here is what I'm going to be using to make this wine. Potato masher. I'm going to start out with four pounds of sugar. I've got seven pounds of frozen and fresh strawberries. I have pectic enzyme, I've got Camden tablets, I've got true lemon, which is nothing more than crystallized lemon juice, and I've got some straining bags. That's what I'm going to be using to make this wine. Now there are some other things that you could add to it. Instead of the uh, true lemon, you could have used the juice of one lemon, or you could have used an acid blend, which is a product that's a combination of citric acid, malic acid, and tartaric acid. But basically, this will give me the acidity that I need to make this wine. The peptic enzyme, I'm going to be using that to help clarify the wine because we're dealing with a lot of solid, solid fruit, uh, fruit material. So that's going to help settle all that down and make the, uh, make the juices run a lot clearer. Camden tablets, well, since we are dealing with fresh fruit and frozen strawberries, this fruit is not sterilized. So the Camden tablets will basically create a mild sulfur solution, which over the course of 12 to 24 hours, which will dissipate. But in the, uh, in the intervening time, it will sterilize your fruit to make sure that there's no harmful bacteria or yeast in the product. Your straining bags, well, a couple of ways you can do that. If you don't have dedicated straining bags, uh, any, any other way that you can strain your fruit, you could use if, if, it, if you have to. You can use uh, 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 muslin bags or you can use, uh, if, if it's all you got, you can use cheat, uh, several layers of cheesecloth. But basically, you want to strain out as much juice as possible from the strawberries and hopefully remove as much of the uh, 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 bulk material as well. Uh, that's what I'll be using these for. And those are all the ingredients that I'm going to be using to make this wine. Okay, the very first thing that I want to do is that I want to start uh, putting all these strawberries into either a large bowl or pot. I am kind of hoping this bowl is big enough because I don't want to use a pot because it's just too hard to video. All right. Get in there. All right. The thing about frozen strawberries, though, is that they're awfully smaller than fresh strawberries, but that's okay. not going to matter that much in the final product. All right. And two pounds of fresh strawberries. This is a total of seven pounds of strawberries, by the way. For two and a half gallons, that's just enough. I mean, you can always add more. For slightly stronger strawberry flavor, but basically this is all you really need for this much wine. All right, the next step 
is to try and mash up some of the strawberries that are a little whole. You could have chopped them up a bit, but the potato masher works just fine. Some of the online research that I've seen suggests that you do not use a food processor or blender. Apparently it's got something to do with the effect it has on the uh, skin and the seeds, which turns uh, them into just a little bit of bitterness. I mean, you don't have to be perfect at this stage. You just want to just get a rough, a rough mash. Because these berries are going to be sitting at room temperature for the next 24 hours. And they are going to break down a bit on their own. All right. The next step is I'm going to put them in. I could use the enzyme now and the Camden talent, but it's now, but in fact, I think I am. Before I put them in the straining bags, I'm going to use about one and a one and a half tablespoons of peptic enzyme. Just sprinkle that on there. The amount of enzyme that you're using per gallon is actually usually written on the package itself, indicating how much you should use. And the Camden tablets. I want to crush up two of these. All right. Usually it kind of and just sprinkle that on. No need to be precise. Just get it in there. And you can go ahead and give that a stir. All right. Next thing I want to do is that I want to put these in straining bags now. Uh, and let me go grab those real quick. Okay. Now, once again, you can either do the straining now or you can do it a week from now. After it's been sitting in the fermenter, but I'm going to do it now. I also now realize that that's not going to work. Let's use this one. Now it's not going to be nice and tidy. These are one gallon bags. I could probably get them all in one bag, but I'll probably use two. And one more. Now, most of the methods that I've seen have indicated that, that normally you would just uh, put them in a bowl or a pot and just simply cover it with a towel, and basically that's to allow that, uh, that sulfur gas that's gonna be produced by the, by the Camden tablets to, uh, to escape.
Okay, that's one. Let me get this other one. The bags were soaked in uh, star sands to help sanitize them, although I think the uh, Camden tablets probably would have done equally as well. But no point in breaking a habit. I mean, you know star sands is gonna, it's gonna get it sanitized, so you might as well just use it. Okay, that's that. No point in letting any wine to be go to waste. All right, so we got our bags in there. We've got uh, peptic enzyme in there. We've got our Camden tablets in there. We do not have to put in our sugar at this point. We do not have to put in the uh, the uh, acid blend or the lemon juice or the true lemon, which is acting as our citric acid in there at this time. What we do need to do is wonder why on earth I did this on the dining room table instead of in the kitchen, preferably over the kitchen sink. That's what I'm going to do next time I try this. We need to add just enough water. Just enough water to, uh, to cover it. And it shouldn't take more than this. Huh? Yeah, it didn't take more than that. Well, after that, all you need to do is just uh, cover it with a tile. My particular case, I'm just going to use the lid, but I'm not going to really put it on there. I'm just going to have it just, just on there like, like that so that uh, the gas can escape. But basically, that's it. You let that set for the next uh, 12 to 24 hours. The uh, Camden tablet uh, will basically, uh, uh, the sulfur produced by those will dissipate, disappear. And uh, after that, we can then uh, add our sugar. Well, we can then, uh, yeah, we can go ahead and add our sugar and our uh, our, uh, our citric acid and uh, begin the uh, begin the fermentation. Oh, and yeast. That's what I forgot to put on the table. Uh, I'm using a standard wine yeast, so we'll, we'll, we'll use that again. I've made uh, wine with bread yeast. If that's all you got, then that's all you got. Uh, make use of that. And uh, we'll come back in... Uh, 24 hours and uh, proceed to the next step. Now, when it comes to dissolving your sugar, there are a couple of ways of doing it. We've got uh, we've got four pounds of sugar here that we need to, to incorporate. We could just take the entire bag and just put it into the uh, container that has uh, our uh, strawberry pulp and juice and start stirring. Or we could uh, simply dissolve it in some warm water, uh, let it cool down a bit, and then add that to the strawberry uh, to the strawberry mixture, which is what I think I'm probably going to end up doing. Out of the four pound bag that we've got, I think I'm just going to pour off about a cup, cup and a half. No need to be precise. I want to I want to set that aside just so that I can uh, make adjustments to the sweetness level later on. Gives me a little room to work with. More than likely, I'll probably have to add more than that, but uh, we'll see. Then. Your remaining sugar. Just go ahead and pour it into your uh, into your warm water. Actually, this is hot water, but you just go ahead and pour it in and start stirring. It's a whole lot easier to do it this way than to dump the, your sugar into the uh, into the strawberry mixture because. It will dissolve a whole lot quicker. And once this is dissolved, what I'm going to do is just simply let it cool down to room temperature. I still have another, um, it's like three hours before I want to add this to uh, my strawberry mixture, just to give my uh, my Camden tablets a full 24 hours to do their thing. And that will give this plenty of time to bring it down to room temperature. 
Okay, we're now ready to proceed to the uh, next step, which is adding in the sugar, water, and yeast. We'll begin by taking off the cap. We don't need that anymore. And we'll start with some of the sugar, which is at room temperature. And remember, we reserved about a cup, a cup and a half of sugar. And I've already diluted that, so that's now at room temperature, in case we need to add it later on. Uh, let's give this a stir. And let's add some of our water. Again, we are making about two and a half gallons of, uh, of strawberry wine. So I'm gonna bring this up to near the two and a half gallon mark. And whereabouts are we? Not quite far enough. Still got a little bit more to go, but I want to make sure that my initial gravity reading is going to be close to where I want it. So let's give this a stir. Missing my turkey baster. Let me grab that real quick. Okay, let us take a quick little sample. Okay, looks like we are at 1.090. Okay, I'm trying to shoot for a uh, gravity reading of 1.078 or thereabouts. So it looks like I'm a little bit on the high side, which is why I'm glad. Didn't dump on all the water, so let's bring the water level up a bit. Let's take another reading. I am now at one point. I'm at one point oh eight oh, which is exactly where I want to be. So I didn't, which is why I'm glad I saved the uh, reserve sugar. Uh, 
All right. That is going to give me a potential alcohol of about, it looks like uh, roughly 11%. Now, 11% is not bad. However, now that I'm thinking about it, I think I prefer to have my wine just a little bit stronger than that when it's all said and done. So I'm just gonna add in just a little bit more of that reserve sugar. Mm. We'll start with that and let's see what we get. Stir that in. Give it a good stir. And let's take another reading. Okay, I finally got the hydrometer to move up a bit. It now reads as 1.8, I'm sorry, 1.084, which is good enough. Uh, potential alcohol of, yep, roughly 11%. Now, to satisfy the acid requirement for this recipe, I'm going to use, uh, again, I'm using true lemon, which is crystallized lemon. And I'm going to use about five packs of that. Each pack is about a quarter of a lemon. And let's go ahead and just work that in uh, just a bit. And that's all I need to do there. Okay, that's that there. Okay, now, if I let uh, fermentation or secondary fermentation go down to 0 0.990, then of course that alcohol content is going to rise, but for the moment, I'm gonna stop it there. Now all I have to do is to go ahead and uh, put in the yeast. Using just standard Red Star Premier Blanc yeast. It's nothing, uh, nothing special. You can use whatever it is you like. And again, because we're only making two and a half gallons, we only need to use half a pack. Let me eyeball it here. And again, you just need to just sprinkle it across the top. A bit more than half, but it never hurts, and I still have a pretty good supply left. And that's that. Now, normally I would just leave it just sitting on top like that and let it do its thing. But because of these bags floating on top, I think I'm just going to just incorporate it just a bit. I don't really want to stir it in. I just want to kind of give it a little bit more room to work with. All I have to do at this point, put the lid on, nice and tight. Again, this uh, fermenter, fermenter uses, uh, uses its own built-in uh, air, built air, uh, air lock, so that would be this here, so I don't need to plug in, a, uh, plug in what we call, I guess would be a standard air lock, because this will work just fine, letting out the CO2 gases escape. So all I need to do now is just uh, let it sit for the next, uh, five to seven days. Uh, at that point, we'll take out the bag, squeeze out all of the uh, potential wine juice that uh, we can. Uh, and since I don't have a compost, we we'll just simply discard the remaining pulp. Uh, four to six weeks after that, uh, basically the wine is done. Uh, it's, it'll be better if we give it more time, but as far as the initial steps are concerned, that's it. Now that it's been five days, this is our current uh, AVB uh, reading. We're just going to go ahead now and remove those uh, straining bags and uh, rack these into our secondary fermentation carboys.
Okay. I really don't need this off. Now that everything's been transferred, it looks like I've got just under two and a <laughs> two and a quarter gallons of, uh, of of strawberry wine. We're just going to go ahead and put this aside for the next month or so, and uh, I'll stand by for part two. We'll see how it's how it looks.